Hi, welcome to the One in Twenty Show. We're back after a little bit of a break, um, and we're here with Louis Cole. We're really excited to have you on. Welcome to the show. Louis Cole is a filmmaker and activist from the UK who has been traveling the world and sharing his adventures through his channel, Fun for Louis. His personal approach to filmmaking and photography allows for his audience to truly learn more about who he is as an individual. He is very intentional about the things that matter and has made it a point to amplify social change and help others understand why it is so important to do so. We chat about what got him into the visual arts and why he believes it is such an impactful medium that inspires so many. I wanted to kind of start by asking you what got you into the visual arts. You've kind of briefed me a little before we started recording, but um, what got you into picking up a camera and taking it across the world to document your travels and everything? Yeah, I think it probably goes back to my dad having kind of an interest in photography. And then literally, I remember when I was like four years old, my dad bringing home a big VHS like shoulder video camera. Mm -hmm. And even back then, I just... I just remember loving it and then through my kind of childhood having kind of just those old cassette tape cameras I don't know what they were like dish like high eight digital eight and then it moved to mini dv and I was always like playing around just being creative making little animations or filming what I was up to um, and then when I was in my late teens um, I think it might have been for my 20th birthday I can't, can't really remember now but I started doing road trips with my friends and taking a camera to kind of document what we were doing mm -hmm. and just shooting these really fun road trips. We would go on driving mm -hmm. all around Europe in a minibus. And it was just like a way of capturing memories really and just being able to share the adventure with people. And even back then, this is way before YouTube was around, but I was like cutting together these videos and just showing them to my friends. Like I love this idea of being able to like make something fun and like, mm -hmm share it with people so I think that's where it started from and then um yeah and then it's just kind of amazing for me that something that I was already passionate about learning more about cameras but to be honest that wasn't my initial interest it was more about sharing the story right and then as I got you know and then YouTube rolled around and it kind of just it was just like this perfect kind of time where I was like oh wow this you know I stumbled into it this is something I'm really excited and passionate about anyway yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the perfect platform to kind of share some of my adventures and then got more and more into cameras and yeah. learning about how to share that better and capture that in a, in a better, a higher quality way. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, we had, um, I don't know if you know who Sam Elkins is. He's yeah. a photographer. Yeah. We had him on mm -hmm. and, um, he's a really cool guy cause he's, uh, closer to my age and he talked about how hitting that boom, um, kind of at the right time where he was, you know, creating, 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 creating. And then suddenly, you know, I think it was probably for him Instagram, but Instagram was coming up and he was putting everything there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know for you that you kind of started creating Live the Adventure and a little background, you're from Britain, which yeah. is which is kind of cool as well. Cool spin on there's so many American creators mm -hmm. <laughs> that are doing this, but it's really neat that you're from there. But um, what kind of spurred on Live the Adventure? Because I think you've hinted at it. Yeah, so it started off like my channel and where I've been posting for years is Fun for Louis. So that's my main kind of personal journey. And yeah. for a long time, I was doing like daily videos about my life and travels. Then I realized like, I think I want to leave a legacy and build something that's much more than just centered around me. Because I think, there, I mean, my slogan on the channel was like, peace out, enjoy life and live the adventure. Mm -hmm. But I thought this kind of idea of living your adventure and what that could look like personally for you, yeah. which might be very different to me. Like mine's is more about traveling the world. And, but I think for some people they might not have the freedom to do that, but they can live adventurously in their own lives. Yeah. Um, so I just like this idea of building a brand around encouraging others. Mm -hmm. So I've been exploring like what, what could that be? How could I build a platform that's helping people beyond just like being an inspirational account so yeah. um, we started running some events we've done two different events now we want to kind of ramp that up do some more kind of summits so we did like a uh, two weekend events like three-day events where people could buy tickets come along we did like workshops we had really cool chats um, just a really cool time of connecting really like to learn how to be share your stories creatively but also mm -hmm. how to get out there and travel and live adventurously uh, and then we've been 
running kind of um i guess like influencer trips where i've been taking my friends that are also have got big followings on youtube mm -hmm. and instagram and and taking them around the world and doing cool things and for me the next step for that is to really tie in like a strong humanitarian or social justice cause or something where we can like highlight something or celebrate something happening in the world that's a bit deeper than just kind of beautiful travel right and uh yeah and also just kind of harness the potential of having these this online platform mm -hmm. we're building our own kind of the instagram and facebook page for live the adventure yeah. and want to start kind of rolling out um i guess kind of curating inspirational travel content and then in the future hopefully kind of produce some uh of our own kind of maybe some short films or mini docs and stuff and have that Wonderful. under the live the adventure brand rather than then you're on for louis yeah, yeah. And, and i also did shoot a documentary which I'm still in post-production of where I flew around the world with my friend JP. He's, he's the pilot. And that was amazing. And that, that will probably come under the kind of banner of live the adventure as well, even though we're not a production house or whatever. But um, I, I like the idea that a lot of these other projects and side projects I'm doing can come under this, yeah. this bigger kind of umbrella brand. Right. Um, well, yeah. and you, you mentioned it already, but I know that social change is a big mm. part of who you are as well as being open to collaboration. And I mean, you mentioned that, how important that is to you to be. Um, I think that's what's really beautiful about what you've been able to do with visual arts as mm. well as, you know, being a platform for encouragement for people to follow along and mm. see your life and your adventures. And, um, but speak to social change as it comes to traveling because traveling the world, you know, we were even talking about how the Philippines is third world country. Um, there's different countries all over the world mm. with very different climates, um, politically and even, you know, just with, um, economics and all of that. Um, what does social change kind of mean to you as you, push forward to keep creating content and that sort of thing yeah again for me my journey with like trying to live kind of focused outwardly not not just about kind of building my own career or anything started at a young age as well my parents brought me up in that um in that atmosphere of like you know we we need to look love people around us and that that was a huge part of me growing up so I think from a young age um you know i was going on you know trips out to romania to work with you know um run summer camps for like orphans and then i ended up um 12 years ago going to africa for the first time and went to help a charity that i was working for in london um build a children's home in kenya with some what was really cool is like bringing some young people out from london who were also not in poverty in the same way but definitely kind of at risk young people that you know either are involved with um gangs or kind of the uh, just un unhealthy lifestyles and like trying to have a positive impact on them so for me i was kind of involved with that before i started youtube as well like i was running um i had like a mobile youth club that i ran on a double decker bus around mm -hmm. london for five years um before youtube started and so that that's kind of a big part of what i am um, kind of what's the word like that's kind of what makes me tick in a way like mm -hmm. I, I I'm very driven by wanting to try and make a change and mm -hmm. that kind of spilled over into the content I'm making as well like not all the time I mean sometimes I'm just having fun and doing crazy things around the world but for me it always comes back down to like the at the end of the day it's it's not enough just to take beautiful films and photography around the world but like to meet with people to learn from people and if there are ways that we can support and help people without being kind of condescending mm -hmm. and um you know exploiting people i feel like that then there must be ways to do that when we're traveling as well so i've always looked for ways to like serve communities support people when i'm uh, out there traveling mm -hmm. and i'd encourage other people to do that and like find okay how can you maybe you want to have a fun holiday but how can you tie in a part of that that is giving back and supporting yeah. a charity and you know another it, it, it might not be a humanitarian cause but another thing i'm planning at the moment is to go with a with a group that like a non-profit that um do tree planting mm -hmm. so i might go out for a week and just um just plant trees and i think that's just there's just really fun things you can do like that where it's not you don't have to go and work in an orphanage because i think there's also sometimes with things like that there's there's kind of the risk of exploitation or sometimes it's not actually helpful 
just to go out to Africa. Oh, well, I'm going to go to Africa and build a school. Like, I think that's what people yeah. think it's all about. But I think there's there's many ways that you can mm-hmm. kind of give back and support and raise awareness around things. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, it's a huge topic to talk about. But I feel mm-hmm. like for me, it's it's intrinsic to to what I care about. I, mm-hmm. And I, I think sometimes the travel influencer space can let get a little bit shallow. And I feel like even for me, like I've taken a bit of a break from my regular Instagram uploads because I feel like a lot of it is, I mean, literally the photo I posted today was me in a hammock on a tropical island. And I'm like, it's cool. And hopefully it inspires people to want to get out there and explore. But for me, I'd love to be able to share more stories of the culture and the people. And yeah. so I'm trying to figure that out at the moment. Like, how do you, how do you, how does that look when you're trying to make mm-hmm. kind of beautiful content? Yeah. And yeah. also speaking to that, the meaning, I, yeah. I'm catching that, you're you know wanting to add meaning to your Mm. work which i think you already do Mm. um but yeah that is always a concern isn't it i think the creators who think that way um are thinking for the betterment of themselves as well as those around them Mm. but meaning is so important and there's so much and maybe this would be a cool um side kind of conversation right now is um with so many people kind of creating the cookie cutter um, Instagram accounts or, uh, photographers who all shoot the exact same way. Mm -hmm. And, um, their images are no less great from somebody else's maybe, but Mm -hmm. how do you tell a story with your work when everybody else around you is trying to bite and claw their way to the top of YouTube and trying to like, how do you uniquely establish your niche into it? Well, for me, that's why video is probably my for me a better medium because you you've got so much more uniqueness in what you create because you've you know it's it's not just a one still image Mm -hmm. and i think i've seen those accounts where you just you know or even that temptation if you go to a place and you know there's that classic shot Mm -hmm. oh i need to get a shot in front of this or you know Mm -hmm. i just think there's there's it's become now where and the worry is that people will travel but they'll just travel to get the shots you know and i feel like that's what i want to like I don't want to inspire people to travel to get the beautiful Instagrams. I want to inspire people to travel to like really connect in with culture. And do you think people are catching on to that? Uh, I think we're just we're just at a stage where we just need to be careful because I think people can get obsessed about what their lives look like rather than what they're actually experiencing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think I mean this is a whole nother rant, but I feel like Instagram is particularly uh one of those platforms which is at risk of 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 in like pushing just a more shallow life where you're trying to just show this very (laughs) kind of narrow kind of perspective of what you're up to and what you're doing Mm -hmm. and so that's why for me video you can't fake it as much and you can't just show just all these beautiful shots all the time so i feel like there's for me it's a better medium to like share real stories and and draw people in a bit more and add more depth because mm-hmm. you know that you know there's you know i, I just feel yeah. like it is better no um, yeah definitely. but I'm, I'm not saying photography isn't powerful as well but i think i almost want to see some more originality on you know, on instagram as a platform and, and i'm inspired and why one of the reasons i'm taking a bit of a break is like i can pump out those images all day long of kind of the classic and you know mm-hmm. beautiful travel shots but sure. i kind of want to think you know how do i be unique because that's where i thrive being in a unique environment and i yeah. I, can't, I think people should look to do that don't look just to be a clone of everyone else like mm-hmm. there's there's something beautiful about kind of putting your own creative spin on things Definitely. and there are some crea- creators that really stand out as like wow they really set a trend for this style but then you just see thousands of copycats doing the exact same thing and then it just becomes kind of a bit like oh, I'm bored of this now. So it's kind of, yeah. maybe it's just to do with constantly evolving and adapting and, mm-hmm. and pushing the boundaries. And yeah, um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's an interesting kind of age that we live in that we're navigating through these such fast paced social media platforms yes. where they're constantly shifting and new features come out and people are, you know, more and more creators are rising up and you're just suddenly, you're just flooded with this kind of just, endless feed of just people <laughs> of the uh, same stuff yeah yeah, yeah. And, uh, but it's great that people are out there doing it and i love meeting people one of my favorite things is meeting people out there when i'm traveling who have 
been inspired to travel from watching my content. Maybe they were still at school, maybe they couldn't at the time, but maybe a year later they're, they're finally out there doing it themselves. And sometimes they're like, oh, I, I don't even watch YouTube anymore. Like I yeah. used to watch your videos and now I'm doing it myself. And for me, that's like really rewarding. So I'm like, oh, this is actually- It's working maybe. Got people out there. And yeah. like, that's the main aim for me. It's, it's, right. it's, it's so cool to see people doing it themselves, having their own adventures. Yes, know? definitely. Well, um, that is incredibly inspiring. And it, it's interesting because, um, and this, I, one of the things I didn't want to do with, our talk mm. like this interview is I feel like there's so many that when they come to a creator like yourself um, they focus in so deeply on what everybody knows um, but I I'm enjoying that this conversation has a little bit more of kind of those things the not the daily struggles necessarily but yeah. the things that maybe are not unearthed when you're um, you know fun for Luis and you're mm -hmm. on your channel talking to people but there's another side of you, I think that people don't see right. Like off of the camera. Mm. Um, and that's why this is very interesting to me. Do you think that Instagram, um, and social media platforms as well as YouTube is going to maybe not going to, but do you think it's ruining some people as far as, you know, like you mentioned, they are falling deeper and deeper into themselves and not really looking out to, other people and creating kind of the cookie cutter. Yeah, I, and... I think the dangers for me, and I'm interested in helping, I'm an optimist. So I see something, I'm like, okay, there might be something broken, but I feel like it can be fixed or redeemed, you know? And I think there's a beautiful side to the social media platforms, the way that we can connect with people all around the world. And there's like, you're seeing things online that you would have never seen or heard about if you know before the internet was around yeah but i do think there's the dangers are that we're creating a kind of this toxic environment of like envy where mm -hmm. you know even me who i've traveled all around the world gone to the most incredible places if i'm sitting at home and i'm like having a chill day or i'm not travel, i haven't got any travel plans coming up and then i'm just seeing people constantly in these beautiful locations Honestly, it doesn't feel inspiring to me. Sometimes I just feel like crap. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I wish mm -hmm. I was, you know, on a beach or something. But I mean, it's, it, and I want, then I wonder like, wow, how, what would this be for, feel like for people that have never traveled or never get out? And sometimes I'm like torn because I'm like, it could be inspirational, but could it also be super depressing for people because mm -hmm. they don't get to do it. So I don't know where that line is between making someone inspired and, and maybe it's down to the person that's viewing the content. But I do know that since social media has risen, um, cases of depression, anxiety, and even suicide have risen like like by extreme amounts. And I think there's something in to toxic about social media that we need to address and figure out. Mm -hmm. And I and and there's also this very intense addiction. And I'd, I'm 100% addicted to my phone. Like I'm. Yeah. I, I remember before Christmas, I deleted Instagram for about a week. But then I had to reinstall it because I had like a sponsored post I needed to post. <laughs> but I did feel so much nicer not scrolling Instagram all day. Isn't it weird? Yeah. Like our parents and grandparents and never had that. You yeah. know, I always think about that now with there's moments where I think everybody kind of feels that way. And if they're self-aware mm. and they realize that they're falling into that, um, they want to kind of distance themselves. But when your work is out there mm. and you, you know, for you, you have such a, you kind of have a network with your you know large scale audience that you're able to and i i can understand what you're saying that it kind of becomes like what do i do you know i have yeah. to get this sponsored post out to make money but then i don't want to be on it so yeah i, I know yeah. what you're saying there yeah. so i i think the answer isn't because i think some people would go the extreme and being like delete all social media if the phone have a full like detach from that because there, there is this toxicity toxicity to it yeah but i this is where i'm like oh maybe we can redeem this and and make this a place that can also be beautiful mm -hmm. and celebrate things and not be not just induce envy from people so i think that's where it, when i'm thinking about my own content and creation mm -hmm. i want to make sure that i'm not making stuff that is making fee people feel crap about themselves but makes them inspires people to like do more or to get excited about their own lives yeah, so for, for me that, I mean, it, all of this stuff we've talked about, it all boils down to how are, you, how are you making people feel that are viewing your content? And if I, if I can find a way 
to make stuff that isn't just isn't just like hey look how great my life is which i think occasionally maybe my content can be viewed like that but mm. but also it can be this deeper thing of like hey look what's out there look what you can do like even if you've not done it before like this is what's you know what's accessible this mm -hmm. is and also not just to take beautiful photos or whatever but there's like this real rich culture out there which i think will change people's lives if they get out there and, and travel and experience mm -hmm. this so i i like that element of it and i i believe that you know i feel like there's just two there's two sides to it mm -hmm. there's like the dark side and the beautiful side so I, I yeah i just think it's like constantly being aware of that and when people are posting if anyone's listening like people that are are creating online just be aware like don't don't fall into the temptation of using it to kind of almost boast about your life and certainly and show how great you you know mm. oh, i'm here again doing amazing <laughs> things it's like hey you know let's try and spread something that's impacts people in a great way you know definitely yeah no that exactly what you i think that what you just said is so uh valuable i think for people to I think a lot of people are interested, um, creators are interested in what it's like to be at a level where they have a large audience. Mm. And I think that's where biting and clawing your way to the top now is, you know, much harder than maybe when you kind of, you yeah. know, hit that, that pinnacle when it happened, when YouTube came out and, and all that stuff. But, um, one thing I will, I kind of wanted to speak to is because this show is kind of more young artist centered. Um, how does somebody come up into, um, you know, give it, it could be any artistic platform, but how does somebody start from the bottom um, and kind of climb their way to the top? How much of a mix of ambition versus, you know, normal, just inherent talent that somebody mm. might have? What, is there a balance is, you know, I don't know if you know what I'm speaking to. Yeah, here, I, I, again, I think it's, it's so hard for me to speak on this, like now giving today's the differences between when I started even like five, six years ago. But I do think collaboration's a huge one. If you can connect with people that are further on, and even if it's just like, yeah, just make friends. It's not about trying to get from other people, but it's it's trying to learn or even support other people. Say, you know, can I come and help with something, you know, or anything like that. I would, if you were, if you are got that hustle mentality of like, I want to learn about this industry. I want to, get in there and you know go and do an internship with like I mean I'm always what's bad for me I'm always looking for help and support doing my projects but I don't even know how to like get pe you know I don't even know how to reach out to my audience and say hey could someone come and help me with this but I feel like because most, you might get hundreds and hundreds yeah and, hundreds and I don't know and, like yeah. I just think how do you know I'm going to find someone that I'm, I'll really click with mm -hmm. I do need to do it I definitely think in the next few months I'll have a couple of people helping me with stuff if possible but I've met a lot of people in that position where they really need help and want help. And I think that's a great way to get started is like supporting other people and get getting into those circles. Mm -hmm. um, finding online communities of other creators as well, like whether those like Instagram meetups, I think all of that helps. And yeah. then also creating something that's firstly like true to you that people can see and sense the passion of, of, that you have for it. Mm -hmm. And then something that's unique enough to stand out. And I also think right now, which is probably different from when I started, the, the channels and pages that seem to be succeeding the most are like really niche. Mm -hmm. Like they very. have a very, very focused topic of what they make content about. Mm -hmm. And I think I right now, one of the reasons why my kind of um, platforms aren't exploding with growth and stuff is because I've become way too broad in what I do. I kind of travel a bit. I've r randomly made a few little tech videos where I'm just talking about cameras and then I might make a video about you know, like going on a road trip and my stuff got stolen. It's just like, I kind of share my life, but I feel like the just general life sharing content isn't as engaging right now for people. The hmm. daily vlogs I feel like are on are going kind of out. And I Do feel really? like, yeah, yeah, and I feel like niche content where you've got somebody that's got one type of content that's and they just really hone in on that and like, mm. and uh, make that as best as they can. Yeah. Like people like Peter McKinnon, he... Yes. He's got a very niche. You know the kind of stuff he's making, like like short tutorials. He talks about, you know, he's occasionally does like travel stuff, but it's it's mainly around tech and video production and yep. you know photo editing. And he's really like honed in on that niche, and that's why I think he's exploded so in such a big way. 
Interesting. Um, yeah. And there's other creators I could point to. I think they've really found their niche, you know. So I think that's those are the bits of advice. Collaborate, find your niche, um, make stuff that's unique and stands out and then be make sure that you're driven from a passion rather than you're trying to find a formula and repeat it. Like mm-hmm. people can sense whether you're passionate about what you do. Definitely. Well, that's, that's very helpful uh, mm-hmm. to hear some of that advice. And that's really interesting that you kind of are speaking to um, how vlogging is kind of maybe not you know, as popular right now, but at the same time, something I think you, that is unique about your content is even though you do have a broad interest of Mm -hmm. different things that you want to do and talk about, it is cool for those who are genuinely interested in what you're doing because, you know, you're offering them a piece of your life that maybe, you know, a lot of people in the old days might not want to even do anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you see yourself? What I'm always curious about is how do you see yourself on a day to day advancing um, as far as like, what does your future look like? Do you play every day just kind of like, you know, I don't know if you live day to day, but like how do you make your next endeavor, creative endeavor, like come to life to where you can make a profit off of it? Yeah, so I, I definitely think in the time where I was doing the daily vlogs, I was just living day to day. I'd wake up in the morning sometimes. I'd know I'd have no plan for what I was going to shoot, and then I'd just kind of like bring something together. And always I'd have something at the end of the day, even if it wasn't like an amazing story. It would just be like what I've experienced that day. But it gave me no headspace to think beyond that mm-hmm. and about about building anything. Sure. I think now having some time where I've been much like I've been. I've been putting out videos at a slower pace and I've been for the first time in six years, like had a home to base out of. Uh, It's given me a lot of time to think about, okay, how do I build more? How do I kind of, yeah, I think about the future really. And there's been a a few fun projects. I think working on a documentary long-term and having, I mean, we've been in post-production for like almost a year and a half, wait, September, maybe a year and maybe 14 months of like sure. in post-production and that's crazy for me I've never worked on a project and had something that's been spanned that long mm-hmm. and it's weird because yeah. you don't get that sense of like every day you've like achieved something and it, you can tick off like I've edited I've filmed and edited a vlog tick you know mm-hmm. that gives you a sense of like worth or achievement but it's been weird for me sometimes because I haven't got to the end of the day or some days I get to the end of the day and there's nothing I can you know, I can be like, oh, I've worked a little bit more on that project. And it's like, there's not a clear defining kind of achievement. So that's something in my own life that I've had to adjust to is like being okay with that, that I don't have to like tick off a box every day and say, Mm -hmm. I've achieved something, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, or, or, you know, I've achieved, I haven't segmented it like that. I've been like, I've made a small, I've dropped, I've put another drop of effort into this bigger pot of Mm -hmm. project, you know? Yeah, certainly. Um, But something I am, playing around with as an experiment is I've I've relaunched my food for Louis channel and again talking about the niche thing I'm doing like vegan cooking Mm -hmm. episodes which are kind of comedy because I don't know what I'm doing I I, (laughs) I'm not like a cook uh but it's really fun for me because it's a very different type of content and I've got my friends help me and we make something and invite a bunch of friends over and and I serve food and for me that's just a, a totally different type of content and Um, it's like a fun new thing for me that I can try that's outside of the realm of like travel and adventure and but I do also have a lot of trips planned and I'm they're kind of in the pipeline where I want to do maybe a week or 10 days with a very specific goal and have like influencer friends come out like I was saying and doing this collaborative trip Mm -hmm. where like the content's based around that maybe I daily vlog it but then we also um, upload like a, a edited episode which i have a team helping me shoot and edit definitely and that that's for me more exciting than just continuing to daily vlog whilst i'm here in venice like going to get coffee and you know Mm -hmm. i just feel like i've done it i filmed so much around venice over the last few years that i feel like i don't i don't feel passionate and inspired to like daily vlog whilst i'm Mm -hmm. situated at home but when i'm out there traveling i still will but i think that's the future for me is like collaborative trips which can build into something bigger and then also i think doing events and real life events whether it's like for an evening or a weekend or some kind of festival where i can draw my viewers in Mm -hmm. to meet face to face and and i mean even from the previous smaller events i've done people have made like lifelong friendships and gone off and traveled together and so i I love that aspect of like trying to draw the community together more than rather than just in the comment section on my youtube videos and instagram you know right 
Well, I mean, I was going to ask you what your coming projects were, but mm-hmm. I, you kind of spoke to all of your future and, and everything. And, um, so I'm just happy that you made time for this. Cause I think it's cool to yeah. hear this perspective on your life. I hope people find it, um, you know, uh, encouraging, especially, you know, trying to make it forward, but, uh, thanks for being on the show. Yeah. I'm really happy that we got to do it. And, um, thanks for watching guys. You can follow, uh, Louis over at fun for Louis yeah. on Instagram and on YouTube and food for Louis and everything that you're coming up and doing. And, uh, thanks for watching guys. Follow us on Instagram at one and 20 show. Um, we got a lot of cool episodes like this and we're kind of slowing the pace down a bit to kind of, um, take more episodes seriously in that we um, present a more like a special um, and I think that will make it more special and there'll be a little bit more of a demand that way as well so thank you for watching thank you for being a part of what we're doing and I hope you guys have a great day